Hello, in this video you will see a brief context of the pre-Socratic philosophy and its main authors, so that you will be able to understand in subsequent videos, the development of philosophy in ancient Greece, as well as each of the most important authors of this period, in a concrete and profound way, thus covering the entire Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy was born in the Greek cities of Asia Minor, Ionia, from the first reflections of the pre-Socratics, centered on nature, based on rational thought or logos. Logos is a term derived from Greek and means the word as meditated, reflected or reasoned, and can also be understood as thought. The objective of the pre-Socratic philosophers was to find the archi, or first element of all things, origin, substratum and cause of reality or cosmos, by means of a rational explanation. The search for a substance that would remain permanent, intact in the face of change, becoming the search for essence versus appearance, for the universal versus the particular, which would later lay the foundations of subsequent philosophical explanations. The first philosophers of this period were monists, that is, they sought a single principle or material foundation of reality. For Thales of Miletus, the first philosopher according to Aristotle, water was this primordial matter, based on the discovery of fossils of marine animals inland and on the fact that water is fundamental for the nutrition and growth of any living being. Was a Greek philosopher, mathematician, geometrician, physicist and legislator. He lived and died in Miletus, a Greek polis located on the Ionian coast in present-day Turkey. Aristotle considered him as the initiator of the school of Miletus. Thales of Miletus he is also recognized for breaking with the use of mythology to explain the world and the universe, changing it instead to natural explanations through naturalistic theories and hypotheses, and considered the initiator of Greek and Western scientific and philosophical speculation. Anaximander, considered to be the unlimited or indeterminate, to this he named it a pyron, from which the opposites of nature are produced, in the first place, the cold and the hot. He is also credited with a terrestrial chart, the measurement of the solstices and equinoxes, work to determine the distance and size of the stars and the assertion that the Earth is cylindrical and occupies the center of the universe. For Anaximander, the principle is the apiron, that is, the indefinite, indeterminate and unlimited. That which is the principle of determination of all reality must be indeterminate, and precisely the apiron abstractly designates this quality. The apiron is eternal, always active and so moving, that is, it moves by itself. It is immortal, indestructible, unbegotten and imperishable, and from it all things are begotten. Everything goes out and everything returns to the apiron according to a necessary cycle. From it the substances opposed to each other in the world are separated and, when one prevails over the other, a reaction takes place that restores the equilibrium according to necessity. For Anaximander, the primordial matter was air, a neutral principle like the apiron, but with properties. Air, he claimed, is transformed into other things through rarefaction and condensation. Rarefaction is the process by which a body or substance becomes less dense. Rarefaction generates fire, while condensation, as its opposite, generates wind, clouds, water, earth and stones. From these substances, all other things are created. Pythagoras held the thesis that all things are numbers, which means that the essence and structure of all things can be determined by finding the numerical relations they express. Pythagoras was also part of the Sophist tradition, holding the novel idea of the immortality of the soul and the possibility of the transmigration of the human soul after death into other animal forms. The general meaning of the term sophist corresponds to that of charlatan or conceptual juggler. The sophist is known as the expert in rhetoric who, in ancient Greece, was dedicated to the teaching of the meaning of words. 
The Sophists were a group of philosophers in ancient Greece who taught mainly rhetoric in exchange for money. Heraclitus, on the other hand, dealt with the sensible becoming of the universe and postulated reason, logos, as the regulating principle of this becoming, insofar as it unifies the opposites. Heraclitus was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher born in Ephesus, a city of Ionia, on the western coast of Asia Minor, in present-day Turkey. Heraclitus' work is entirely aphoristic. An aphorism is a sentence that intends to express an idea in a concise, coherent and apparently definitive way, the aphorism delimits a thought in a precise way. He was also known as the Dark One of Ephesus and the Diviner because his style refers to the sentences of the Delphic Oracle and reproduces reality in an ambiguous and confusing way, using oxymoron, antithesis and paradox to give an idea of it. The oxymoron, within the literary figures in rhetoric, is a logical figure that consists of using two concepts of opposite meaning in a single expression, which generates a third concept. Since the literal meaning of oxymoron is opposite, absurd, for example, in the phrase an eternal instant, the reader or interlocutor is forced to understand the metaphorical meaning, in this case, it is an instant that, due to the intensity of the experience during its course, makes one lose the notion of time. On the other hand, the antithesis is an opposition between two contrary or complementary terms. Paradox or antilogy is an idea logically contradictory or opposed to what is considered true to the general opinion. In rhetoric, it is a figure of thought that consists of using expressions or phrases that imply contradiction. Paradox also makes it possible to demonstrate the limitations of human understanding. For Heraclitus, reality is in perpetual change, each opposite tends towards its opposite, in a process with order and measure, according to the Logos. In the manner of his predecessors, he conceived fire, always alive, as the principle or foundation of the universe, although understanding it as an image of perpetual becoming, rather than as a material element constitutive of all things. On the contrary, for Parmenides of Elia, reality is one and immutable. Parmenides was a Greek philosopher. He was born between 530 BC and 515 BC, in the city of Elia, a Greek colony of Magna Graecia in southern Italy. As far as we can deduce from the preserved testimonies, the poem of Parmenides represents a divine revelation divided into two parts. The first deals with the way of truth, where he deals with that which is, or entity, and expounds several arguments that demonstrate its attributes, it is alien to generation and corruption and therefore is not begotten and is indestructible, it is the only thing that truly exists, thus denying the existence of nothingness, it is homogeneous, immobile and perfect. The second deals with the way of the opinions of mortals, where he deals with matters such as the constitution and location of the stars, various meteorological and geographical phenomena, and the origin of man, building a complete cosmological doctrine. For Parmenides there is being, while there is no non-being. Having established this, change or becoming is impossible if non-being does not exist, the impossibility of which is demonstrable through logic. His arguments in favor of this thesis were taken up by Plato to justify his division of reality into two spheres, the illusory sphere of change and the real sphere of permanence. Aristotle also rescued from his arguments the three fundamental principles of logic and the art of reasoning. Parmenides understood reason as the human faculty of thinking or reasoning, as the means to discover the essential properties of being, a being, which is one, immutable, indivisible, uncreated, imperishable and homogeneous. For Parmenides, trusting in the senses leads us down the path of deception and error, that is, the path of opinion. What truly is, is being, and how it is, can only be revealed to us by means of reason. Subsequently, 
some philosophers began to search for more than one foundation of reality. Among these pluralistic philosophers Empedocles stood out. He founded the doctrine of the four elements, which will endure in the philosophy of nature until the 18th century, water, fire, earth and air, from which the moving principles, love and hate, compose all things. Anaxagoras, for his part, maintained that everything is composed of tiny parts which he called homeomeres, ordered by an intelligence called nous. The Ottomists constituted the most important pluralist school, with great influence on post-Aristotelian physics. Its founders, Lysippus and Democritus, conceived reality as composed of two types of spaces, an empty one and a full one, which would be matter. The latter is composed of atoms, which, as their name indicates, are indivisible particles. All visible things are composed of atoms united among themselves, due to their different forms. But these bonds are produced only by colliding according to random motions in empty space. Next video, in the framework of ancient Greek philosophy we will deal with classical Greek philosophy, Sophists, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. For more videos on history, mythology and philosophy visit my channel in the video description.